Today I'm going to review a book about the typographer named Paul Renner. This book is more, you know, it's about Paul Renner, but it's also, it, it's more, it's not so much of a personal biography as more of like a kind of career biography. And as the, as the subtitle says, it has to do with the many, it has um, a theme about the art of typography. Paul Renner is known for his font called Futura, which is a very popular font in our time. It's used in a lot of logos and a lot of instances. And I'm going to show some of those here. Paul Renner was born in Germany in 1878. His career went from the um, very creative 20s of the Bauhaus era through to all the political turmoil of the 1930s and through World War II and he died in 1946. But he's known for his fonts and he was also a book designer and he made posters and other professional documents. Now, one of the most famous schools during the 19, during the early part of last century was the Bauhaus in Germany, and they made some progressive fonts there. Now, he was not associated with that school, but he was certainly familiar with what was going on in the Bauhaus. Now, one major issue with um, Germany, the beginning of last century, was you have to be familiar with some of these fonts. You know, there's the uh, in Germany the most w the most popular font is the Gothic font, and this is also called Fraktur. Now, this is what the German kids learned when they were in school, so they were familiar with it. And it was easy for them to read. From an international viewpoint, it is difficult for foreigners to read this Gothic font. Renner felt that the Gothic font was an impediment to, for Germany in the international marketplace. And Renner wrote, Fractor was a self-satisfied, narrow, pointed chancery script, a hermaphrodite, a cross between Gothic book script and Gothic cursive. It was decadent. So Renner's goal was to create a German font that would facilitate the growth of Germany. <clears throat> now, one of the other types of fonts that's very um, popular is the Roman font, which has the serifs. And he rejected that because of the association with the Roman Empire. So as he developed his sans serif font, Futura, it went through many iterations and finally, um, he came up with the future font. So one of the fundamental, you know, when he made Futura, he, he had a specific theme in mind. And that's um, geometry, specifically the circle, the triangle, and the square. Uh, he thought that these three symbols were kind of hardwired into every human being. And so if you use them in a font, humans would naturally be um, attracted to those symbols and it would be easier for them to read and to comprehend. So let's look at the triangle shapes in Futura. You got the A and the, the M has the sharp points on it and the N, the V, the W, the Y, the Z. These all have triangular shapes in them. Then if you move on to the circular shapes, you've got the B, the C, the D, the G, the O, the Q, and the U. Now, if you move on to the square shapes, you move on to the E, the F, the H, the N, the R, the X, and the Z. So hopefully you can see the, um, the theme that he's going for when he made Futura. And, you know, a lot of, of course, these letters are naturally have these shapes, but um, I think that 
he designed this font to accentuate the shapes more than many other fonts. Say if you were to have a serif font, if you were to have these shapes and then put serifs on the um, letters, it would distract from the shapes of the circle, the triangle, and the um, square. And with all the fonts he made, he felt like you should have kind of a theme going on to make everything kind of, all the letters work together with each other. And that's another thing about Futura is like, all the letters just really work well together. A lot of fonts, when you just glance at them, they just don't work well together. Even though they might have a theme, though he had a theme, he wasn't, he, he would adapt the theme to fit the, the human eye and the mind. The author of the book is Christopher Burke. And he does a great, he, he, um, he does bring up how some other fonts looked similar to Futura. For example, Futura was uh, introduced in 1927, but there was another font called the London Underground, which is prevalent in uh, England, and that was introduced in 1915. But if you look at some of the details between the two fonts, you can see that there's a difference. If you look at London Underground, lowercase letters, you can see the curve at the bottom of the T is different than the T in the Futura font. Well, some people express concern to Renner that the removal of the curve at the bottom of the T would result in incoherent word shapes. But he insisted that the thematic similarity between the letters constructed with the geometric principles would provide uh, coherence. And he wrote that um, it's not the little marks, rather it's the spiritual bond that binds the many individual marks into a unity of form. You know, one thing that, you, that I realize is how serious these typographers are when they create fonts. I mean, the common reader doesn't really look at fonts, but these typographers take them very seriously. So Renner was, um, so as Futura was released, it became very popular right away. And as I said, it continues to be popular to this day. Now, um, at, but at the time, there was a new school that was created in Munich called the uh, Meisterschule. And it was more, it was opposed to the Bauhaus school, which was an art school. The Meisterschule was more for the technical arts. It was more for the, um, the working man who worked within the arts. Munich was a more conservative city than Berlin. And the National Socialists began to gain power in Munich as they began to um, move into the government they they began to enforce their agenda. One tenet of the National Socialist movement was to um, to return to traditional German values, and the Gothic script was considered um, was a preferred script, be as an expression of traditional Germany. Now we know that Renner already wrote against the Gothic script earlier. So so the Nazis noticed that he stood out as opposing their agenda. Now, but, you know, Renner was always considered a very um, loyal German. And eventually, uh, the Nazis took notice of this, and they put a lot of pressure on him. And through a series of administrative moves, he was released from his position at the uh, Meisterschule in Munich. But the interesting thing that occurred was that as the war progressed and the Germans' territory expanded into other countries, they uh, like France and Netherlands, um, Belgium, and Denmark and Norway, they found that the people living in the occupied territories had difficulty reading the Gothic script. So in 1941, the Nazi party completely uh, flipped their view on Gothic script, and in 1941 they banned Gothic script because they felt that it was uh, they felt that it was an obstacle to their world domination. So in a way, this validated Renner's view 
but he was never a Nazi. And so this was, the, the, you know, the, 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 this validation, you know, was kind of a bittersweet victory. Renner, Renner believed in socialism, but not the totalitarian state. And that, so that's the basics of it. Um, there are some interesting discussions about typography, which I'm interested in. One of the, one of the discussions has to do with the word modern. Because, uh, and Renner believed that the word modern is a misunderstood word. You know, Renner said that the dictionary defines modern as the opposite of antique. But Renner resolved that modern is that which is rational and purposeful as possible, and at the same time has the simplest and most pleasing form. And modernity required a constant process of revelation. Modern doesn't just mean you reject all the old ideas. The old ideas can fit and function in the modern consciousness. That's one thing I like to do is why I read old books is because I just think they're interesting. I don't find much in the modern books that attracts me and I'd rather read books that um, I know have withstood time and been recommended highly by many other prominent people. So he says, modern is an unending task, never to be entirely resolved. We seek it on a narrow ridge, which drops away to convention on one side, on the other side is a modish, a foppish exaggeration. There is no comfortable way. So Paul Renner died in 1946, and his last font was the Stila Futura, and that was released in 1952. Thanks for watching.